Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends, this is the third and concluding lecture on the topic equality and today we will be basically focusing on a luck egalitarianism and its critique and also in the second part of lecture, we will make a uh, comparison between uh, the political value of equality and liberty and we will try to assess whether it is complementary to each other or contradictory to each other. And then finally, we will conclude uh, today's lecture by reassessing some of the key ideals or key issues that we have discussed over the three uh, lectures and a kind of uh, revision to some of those issues which we have covered so far. So, to begin with this idea of luck egalitarianism is considered to be rooted or embedded in the Rawlsian conception of justice and we have one specific topic about Rawls and his conception of justice as fairness, where we will discuss in details what his theory of justice entails. But here, this idea of equality or egalitarianism and one of its form in the sense of luck egalitarianism, what is the rule of luck? and how a state and a public institution should respond to the disparities or inequalities that is result of luck, which has a dramatic or transformative effect on individual's life prospect. So, in that sense, what is the role of public institution or the state? Now, this idea of um, luck egalitarianism is seen or regarded as uh, rooted in this Rawlsian conception of justice as fairness and this idea then is not fully explored or explained in his theory, but developed from there by Ronald Dworkin. So, Ronald Dworkin is someone who is regarded as a theorist who developed this idea of luck egalitarianism by differentiating between optional luck or what is also called the brute luck. So, it is intimately connected with the principles of equality, which we have been discussing over the two lectures. And it considered that it is bad if through no fault of theirs, some people are worse off than others. So, if individual's moral choice or decision or personal effort is not involved and yet they are worse off than others it is regarded as something morally bad, something essentially bad which needs to be rectified. So, the luck egalitarianism tries to address some of the issue, some of the disparities or inequalities, which is a result of certain structures, certain incidents over which individual has uh, no control. So, it regards the inequalities or disparities among the individual bad if it is not because of their personal choice or decisions or efforts. So, the view takes its uh, name from the fact that in the purest form, it makes distribution insensitive to luck. Like you can also understand as chance or opportunity, opportunity not in the exact sense, but also whether opportunity in the same proportion is available to everyone or not. So, in the sense of chance or luck, so it makes distribution insensitive to luck, the disparities or the inequalities that emerge out of purely luck or purely chance over which individual has no control. Luck egalitarianism argues to redistribute the resources or the opportunities 
which makes it insensitive to the mere coincidence of luck or chance and so on. So, it equalizes the distributive effect of luck. So, two people competing for the same good. If that competition is based on the talent or skill or the capabilities of that individual and after the fair competition one of them is selected then it is perfectly okay and acceptable. However, if those competition is somewhat affected by certain coincidence or certain chances or merely the factor of luck which deprive the one of them from competing for the same position at the same level or same playing field, then that kind of disparities or inequalities need to be addressed and so on. So, the luck egalitarianism talks about to make distribution insensitive to the effect of luck or to equalize the distributive effect of luck. So, it is also called responsibility sensitive egalitarianism. So, it supports the idea that an individual cannot be at fault for something which is for them a matter of luck or chance over which they have no control. So, for something over which the individual has no control, he or she cannot be held responsible uh, for that. So, injustice as fairness, Rawls argued that even fair equality of opportunity which says that those with similar abilities and skills should have similar life chances, a law's distribution to be settled by the outcome of the natural circumstances and this outcome is arbitrary from a moral perspective. So, in other words, the Rawlsian conception of addressing some of the inequalities or disparities in society is to do with those conditions which create a kind of inequalities or disparities between and among the people. Although it may be morally arbitrary yet required to make the society more equal or to make the redistribution more fair or just. So, his solution to this problem of why we should deviate from say equality principle or equality of opportunity principle which should be free and equal for everyone. Why we should uh, accept or justify the difference or differential uh, treatment. So, his solution to the problem was to combine fair equality of opportunity with the difference principle. So, anyway we will discuss these principles again when we will discuss uh, Rawls theory of justice. So, his solution to this problem was to combine the fair equality of opportunity that should be made available to everyone with difference principle which express that unequal treatments are justified so long it further the interests of the worst of. So, the only justification from any deviation from fair equality principle or fair equality of opportunity principle is justified only when it further the interest of the worst of in the society. So, Rawls emphasized on the moral arbitrariness of persons circumstances such as natural talents and therefore, it is argued that a better solution would be to minimize the influence of circumstances on the distribution of goods while allowing choice or personal decision or innovation to play a role in determining the outcomes. So, the Rawlsian theory of justice create a kind of fairness or just outcome by minimizing the circumstances and its uh, role in determining the outcome on the one hand and including or acknowledging the role of individual choice or innovation in determining the outcome on the other hand. So, it is a kind of combination of individual choice, desert or uh, capability or responsibility on the one hand and minimizing the biasness that emerge out of the circumstantial or differences in the condition of life among of different individuals and communities. So, it tries to make a kind of balance between these uh, two. 
Luck egalitarianism, however, is not concerned with the equalizing the distributive effect of all kinds of luck. So, the luck as understood as chance or opportunities or coincidence, the luck egalitarianism is not concerned with all equalizing the distributive effects of all kinds of luck. The central distinction that needs to be made is between option luck or brute luck which are defined by Ronald Dworkin as follows. The option luck is a matter of how deliberate and calculated gambles turn out to be. So, the individual while uh, making certain decisions takes certain risks and that taking of decision or taking certain risk is uh, duly deliberate or calculated. Now, whether someone gain or loses through accepting an isolated risk he or she should have anticipated and might have declined. So, this is considered as the individual has control over that kind of outcome, where he can or she can deliberately assess the risk or the outcome and then take a decision. The brute luck on the other hand is a matter of how risk fall out that are not in that sense deliberate gambles, where the individual had no power or no opportunity to calculate the risk. So, it is a merely coincidence of uh, certain events, certain accidents in individual uh, life which determines the outcome for him. Now, in that sense, there is a role of a state or public institution to rectify those disparities or inequalities, which is result of brute luck over which individual has no control. And the optional luck where it is deliberate, the loss and gain is for the individual to bear, but for the brute luck, there is the role of a state or public institution. So, in Dorkin's view, the brute luck and optional luck distinction marks the divide between the luck that calls for redistribution of resources and the luck which requires no such corrective measure. So, if certain actions are duly deliberated by the individual, the outcome of such actions or decision must be bore by that individual. But if certain outcome is the result of mere coincidence or brute luck, in that sense there is a need to redistribute the resources among the individual. So, similarly, Cohen writes that brute luck is an enemy of just equality and because the effects of genuine choice contrast with the brute luck, genuine choice excuses otherwise unacceptable inequalities. So, uh, luck egalitarians then do accept the outcome equalities alone should matter. For them, there is no problem if luck specifies egalitarianism. It is only those inequality which are result of brute luck that egalitarians object and therefore want the state to intervene and redistribute the resources. So, Dorkin maintains that egalitarianism requires equality of resources at the starting point. However, Dorkin's view of resources is rather broader encompassing personal resources which were the qualities of physical and mental health, skills and capabilities. So, Dworkin's view of resources which should be similar and equal to everyone at the starting point is much more broader than mere conception of say primary goods that is external to individual. He also includes certain personal resources such as physical or mental health, skills and capabilities which requires certain kind of services that is provided by the state or the public institution and access and opportunities for those services should be made available to everyone. So, equality of resources requires that impersonal resources be adjusted to compensate for differences in the personal uh, resources. So, some uh, individual because of his or her physical requirement may need more amount of resources than someone who is in the perfect health. 
So, uh, that kind of proportional uh, redistribution of resources must be also adjusted to the needs of differences in the personal resources. So, equality of resources is advanced by Dworkin as an alternative to equality of welfare, where Dworkin argues that there are many difficulties with equality of welfare as a doctrine. The foremost among them is the problem of expensive taste. So, equality of welfare seems to have the implication that society should distribute resources according to the expensive tastes of the people. So, individual may have different tastes. According to this doctrine of equality of welfare, society distribute the wealth according to the requirement or according to the taste of particular individual. So, the implication of this kind of argumentation is that institution or redistributive agency should not make a distinction between an individual having a choice for a bicycle or an individual having a choice for a car or for an aeroplane. So, uh, this choice of individual is quite dissimilar or disproportionate in terms of resources that it requires. However, in the equality of welfare doctrine, it seems that no such distinction is made between the individuals who have the choice of a bicycle or of a car. And therefore, Dworkin argues that it is morally untenable because the uh, resources that it requires is unproportionate and how it is justified that a state or the public institution should provide uh, resources for the individual expensive taste and so on. So, therefore, uh, the principle of equality of resources is justified by Ronald Dworkin over the principle of equality of welfare. Now, if you look at some of the critique to this idea of luck egalitarianism, especially the democratic egalitarian objections, these are that luck egalitarianism fails the most fundamental test any egalitarian theory must mean. And what is that fundamental test is that equal respect and concern for every citizen. In uh, luck egalitarianism, as we have discussed, certain decisions, certain kinds of individuals are excluded from the redistribution of resources or the inequalities in the outcome. Now, the critique of luck egalitarianism argues that it fails the most fundamental test any egalitarian theory must meet and that is the principle of equal respect and concern for every citizen. None should be excluded. So, that is the very fundamental premise or test of any egalitarian theory which does not exclude many, few or even a single individual or member of that society or community. So, first and most importantly, it criticizes luck egalitarianism because it excludes some citizens from enjoying the social condition of freedom on the spurious ground that it is their fault for losing them. So, some individuals are not capable of enjoying certain freedoms or certain opportunities. The responsibility lies not with the social structure or the society, but with the individual themselves. So, luck egalitarianism is perfectly okay with that kind of exclusion. However, the critique of such egalitarianism argues that it fails the fundamental test which treats everyone with equal respect or concern. So, it excludes certain individual and by exclusion it consider the excluded themselves responsible for such exclusion. The second, luck egalitarianism makes the basis for citizens claim on one other on the fact that some are inferior to others in the worth of their lives, talents and personal qualities. Luck egalitarianism reasons for compensating people with disabilities, the untalented and ugly makes them appropriate subject of pity. And pity according to the critiques is incompatible with respecting the dignity of each or every individual. So, in that sense, in luck egalitarianism, by creating a distinction 
between those who are capable or less capable or incapable, those who are able or those who are not so able, those who are talented and those who are not. In these kind of distinction or differentiation, luck egalitarianism make these individuals or group of individuals subject to pity. And this subjectification of individual or group of individual to pity is contrary to the ideal of equality which believes in treating everyone equally with respect on everyone having the same moral worth. And therefore, they criticize this approach of luck egalitarianism which excludes or not just exclude but also make certain individuals subject to self pity or collective pity. Finally, to find out how far advantages and disadvantages are matters of option luck. Critics viewed that luck egalitarians have engaged in close scrutiny of individual behavior. So, whether certain conditions of individual is result of their options luck or brute luck to decide that or to differentiate between this option luck or brute luck, luck egalitarianism tend to interfere or to scrutinize individuals action or choices more intimately, more uh, closely. Now, the critique argues that uh, they engaged in this close scrutiny of individual behavior and it is disrespectful for the state to pass judgment on how much people are responsible for the expensive taste or imprudent just, uh, choices. Now, this second and the third objection came together most crudely for the individuals who are already from the disadvantaged groups such as the unemployed. Now, these groups of individuals who are unemployed are forced to shamefully reveal in order to avoid losing the support of welfare state that they tried or they are qualified and yet they could not succeed. Now, this create a sense of worthiness or less worthiness or create a distinction between and among the individual even if they are equally qualified or equally capable. Now, to avoid this kind of situation, democratic egalitarians propose to replace luck egalitarianism's apparently exclusive concern with distributive equality with a focus on relational or relational or status equality and recasting egalitarianism primary concern to combat social hierarchies and inequalities. So, the focus for the democratic egalitarian is to replace the apparent exclusionary proposition of luck egalitarianism with the primary focus of egalitarianism that is to combat social hierarchies and inequalities and address the relational and the status inequality that exist in the society. So, they criticize the focus of luck egalitarianism which uh, tend to make distinction between among the individual and that distinction create or contradict the fundamental premise of equality which believes in equal moral worth of all individual. And in luck egalitarianism, we have seen how they differentiate between those who are capable, those who take calculated risk and the outcome of that risk should be bore by that individual only in the brute sense. Uh, so, there is a kind of exclusion for those who should be beneficiary of the redistributive practices of the state or not. And in making such uh, distinction, luck egalitarians tend to subject certain individuals or group of individual to uh, something which is contradictory to the basic premise of equality that is of equal moral worth. Now, if we discuss the equality and liberty and the relationship between the two, we will find that equality and liberty may be mutually complementary or contradictory in different contexts and depending upon the biasness or the approaches of individual about the different conceptions of liberty and equality. For example, for R. H. Torney, Harold J. Lasky and Macpherson, among others, they regard liberty and equality as mutually complementary to each other. 
the principle of liberty stipulates equal liberty or freedom for everyone. So, in their understanding or interpretation of liberty or equality, these are mutually complementary in a sense. The liberty makes sense only when it is equally available to everyone else. Similarly, equality must also ensure or provide the condition for an individual to develop himself or herself according to their conception of good. So, the principle of liberty stipulates equal liberty or freedom for everyone. If freedom of one becomes unfreedom for another, it would be against the spirit of freedom itself. So, we have discussed in say for instance, John Stuart Mill conception of liberty, when uh, liberty should be given for individual to lead his or her life the way he or she wants to live and there should be maximum liberty to do that. But inherent understanding in this conception is that similar liberty or the maximum liberty must be equally available to the other members of that community. Now, if the liberty of one interfere with the liberty of another's, then there should be some restrictions or limitation to the liberty of uh, one individual. So, in that sense, liberty and equality is contradictory. So, if one's liberty interfere or is impediment for the liberty of another, then it goes against the very fundamental of the spirit of liberty. So, for example, one is free to listen music and the other individual is free to uh, read a book. Now, if one individual in exercising his liberty to listen to the music of his choice, play it loudly in a space where other individuals are also present, then in that sense the exercise of one's liberty is interference or may lead to an impediment or a kind of restriction for others freedom to read a good book or to read a novel or read a poetry and so on. So, in that sense this ex kind of exercise of liberty goes against the very fundamental spirit of freedom itself. So, this view concedes the imposition of reasonable restrictions on freedom so that the freedom of one does not stand in the way of similar and equal freedom of others. So, in that sense freedom and equality is very complementary to each other. Some thinkers have in such certain situations where the provision of equality may obstruct the enjoyment of liberty. One such thinker is Alexis de Tocqueville, which we have discussed in our introductory video also, where equality has become a kind of within the reach of everyone and not just among the selected few or uh, privileged few. However, the excessive focus on uh, equality may lead to some kind of peril or some kind of destruction, some kind of uh, chaos. To avoid that, there is a need to maintain a balance between liberty and equality and we will discuss why uh, the excessive focus or stress on this principle of equality may be a problem for the uh, collective growth of the society. So, French philosopher Alexis de Tocqueville in Democracy in America argued that the principle of equality was the ruling principle where all distinction of social status are gradually eroded. The principle of equality in this sense encouraged the individual's subservience to public opinion and extension and centralization of the state power. Now, supremacy of this public opinion demanded conformity to generally held attitudes and standards. This conformity to public opinion or generally held attitude and standards may lead to a belief that a dissenting position must be wrong one. So, nobody will dare to question the what is called public opinion or the common sense of the is or the standards or the attitude of that is. So, any kind of dissenting opinion will be not just discouraged, but also suppressed in a sense that people will not be 
um, willing to express anything which contradicts the publicly or commonly held opinion about certain things in the belief that anything that goes against the common or public opinion must be the wrong one. So, the net result of this conformity to public opinion or generally held attitude or a standard is uh, the curtailment of individual autonomy and the loss of liberty. So, the principle of liberty demands the encouragement of a variety of interests and not similarly held common or general public opinion. So, it encourages liberty on the other hand encourages variety of interests and opinions, whereas the principle of equality tends to promote conformity of opinions and attitude and therefore, it can be argued that liberty and equality are contradictory to each other. Lord Acton similarly, a British historian argued that in modern times, liberty is endangered by the rival doctrine of equality with its tendency to erode independent centers of power and to promote the authority of the state. So, as we have been um, discussing this ideal of distributional aspect of equality, which gives the public institution and a state enough a scope to interfere in the matter that is related to personal or maybe the family matters to ensure that everyone should be capable, the education must be provided. Now, to get a good and quality education, the role of public funded school or um, the school that requires some fees or some um, kind of cost and money and so on. Now, the background of uh, the individual family has a decisive implication on the matters of the kind of education that a child gets. Now, to ensure that every child should get same level of education, it allows the state and institution to excessively interfere in the matters that may be regarded as personal or family matters. So, these are seen as a kind of um, a scope which uh, centralize the power in the state or it strengthen the authority of the state and reduce the autonomy of the individual. So, Lord Acton argues that equality is contradictory or it is a kind of impediment for the liberty of the individual and he sees it as a kind of rival political ideal. So, this in Tocqueville and Acton arguments, we clearly see a tension or conflict between the political ideals of liberty and equality. Similarly, Hague in his constitution of liberty argued that individual differences in skills and abilities under the conditions of equality before the law result in inequalities of income and wealth. So, this difference or inequalities in wealth or income, which is the result of difference in individual skills and abilities, which is under the condition of equality before law, that is perfectly justified and accepted. So, if we try to remove these inequalities by forcing an authoritarian rule or a state, it is born to destroy individual freedoms according to F. A. Haig. So, in his views, it is better that some should be free than none and many should have full freedom than all should have limited freedom. So, his conception of freedom is somewhat different than the generally held opinion about the freedom. So, what he argues about freedom or liberty is that the freedom of few is more desirable than freedom for none. So, in the crude sense, equality will try to reduce everyone to the same level, whereas liberty tends to reward those who are willing to take risk, those who are innovative, those who are entrepreneur or enterprising and so on. So, here in this conception of freedom which believes that the freedom of some is more desirable than freedom of none and freedom of many or full freedom of many is more desirable than limited freedom of all as egalitarian or some crude equality 
uh, will tend to uh, equalize that everyone should be reduced to the same level or some kind of equal status. That kind of conception is contradictory to this ideal of liberty and freedom which is understood as the full freedom or the maximum freedom and autonomy for the individual. So, in that sense we see a kind of a tension or conflict between these ideals of equality and liberty. So, liberty and equality conflict with each other when equality is understood as equality of outcome and not equality of opportunity which tries to equalize the society to bring the society to the same level. And liberty is understood merely as a freedom of choice. We have discussed this especially in the negative and uh, positive conception of liberty, difference between freedom and liberty and so on that positive uh, liberty is something much more than merely the absence of impediments. It requires active participation and the rule of law and public institution create the conditions for individual to exercise his or her freedom. So, we see the conflict between these two ideals when we reduce the understanding or interpretation of uh, these ideals. For example, if we mean by equality merely equality of outcome and not equality of opportunity and the other distributional aspects of equality that we have discussed, then we see this equality as an outcome principle contradicts the understanding of liberty which reduce the understanding of freedom of liberty merely to the freedom of choice or freedom to choose. In that sense then we see kind of tension between these two terms. So, equality as equality of outcome tends to work as a leveling mechanism. This in turn reduce their freedom of choice by restricting the availability of outcome. However, we need to think that there may be tension between equality and liberty. But as a political value, these two are not inimical to one another. In fact, it complement each other, it strengthen uh, the value of each other by complementing, by ensuring that everyone in the society should have same moral worth and same conditions of freedom to develop himself or herself according to his or her wishes. So, both these concepts is in that sense interrelational which requires the presence of more than one individual. Now, in that interrelations existence, there is this requirement for rec uh, recognizing the existence of other and by uh, recognition of other and their self worth and their requirement to have freedom or conditions of freedom for developing themselves uh, according to their wishes and so on is the requirement for the uh, conception of liberty and equality and in that sense we see a kind of mutual connection between these two political ideals. Now, to conclude our lecture on equality, there is one general consensus and there is hardly any contestation over this ideal of formal conception of equality that is to say the formal legal and political equality. So, uh, in modern times as I have been discussing since the introductory lecture, the equality is the fundamental premise of modern organization, modern law. So, law treats every member of the society in its abstract sense equally. However, in the practices we see all kind of differentiation or differential treatment and so on. However, the ideal of modern society is formal, political and legal equality of everyone and there is hardly any contestation to this ideal. So, one of the example of this ideal which we have discussed is modern democracy granting every one, every single one educated, uneducated, property, honor or uh, dependent sections, privileged sections or less privileged sections, male or female, everyone giving one vote, one man one vote and one vote one value. So, this principle reflect this perfect formal ideal of equality which is less uh, contested. It is only when we discuss about the substantive notions of equality, there emerge a number of differences and contested interpretations which we have discussed in terms of uh, various conception of equality. And in that sense, distributional aspect of equality become more prominent than the foundational aspect of treating everyone 
equally. So, this ideal of equal moral worth gets less prominence than the distributional aspect of equality which tries to create a kind of uh, equal condition or equality in more substantial sense and not merely in the abstract and formal sense. So, we have discussed the various aspects of equality so far like equality of welfare, of resources, of capabilities and also the complex equality of Michael Walger. We have also discussed the notion of equity and egalitarianism and its connections with the ideal of equality. What is equality of opportunity and its differences from equal access and equality of outcome. Then we have discussed the need and justification for affirmative action or preferential treatment and the moral issue that is involved in such a mechanism. Finally, uh, we have discussed the idea of luck egalitarianism and the interrelationship between the political ideals of equality and liberty in today's uh, lecture. So, what we overall find that equality although is central value in the organization of modern collective political life, its conceptions differ and absolute equality is neither desirable nor possible to realize. So, this idea of equality being central value for the organization of modern collective life, despite of that the conception of equality, what it actually means to be equal and equal of what and among whom are some of the contentious issue and therefore, it leads to different or contested interpretation or conceptualization. And absolute equality is neither desirable nor possible to realize. It is as I have said a gradual and progressive process through which a society become more and more equal and egalitarian and that is the kind of stimulating factor in equality which tries to create a society more equal and more e egalitarian in, in a gradual progressive manner and not in a kind of radical or through radical or immediate kind of rupture from the existing hierarchies and so on. So, in that sense the equality continues to invoke the huge passions among the people especially those who are excluded, marginalized and from the disadvantaged groups or communities. And so long there are exclusions, dominations and marginalization, equality will remain a cherished value or ideal in public political discourse. So, what makes uh, the issue of equality and fight for equality relevant is this ideal among those especially who are marginal, excluded or dominated or suppressed to get treated, get the recognition from the rest of the member in the society of their differential existence and to be treated with equality with self-respect or with the same moral worth and dignity is something which is a kind of continuous struggle. And so long there exist exclusion, marginalization and domination in the society, the principle or the value of equality will remain ideal and uh, relevant in our public political discourse. Now, of course, the conception or interpretation of equality may differ, but the fundamental premise of equality will remain a valid uh, to create the society more and more equal and egalitarian. Now on uh, this lecture today on luck egalitarianism and relationship between liberty and equality, you can refer to some of these texts which is mentioned in this slide and this will be very helpful to understand some of the issues that we have discussed on equality. So that is all on equality. In the next lecture, we are going to um, discuss the uh, concept of right and uh, do write to us what you think about this lectures on equality and we will be happy to respond. So, thank you for listening. Thank you all.